Hey folks, I don't usually make full videos critiquing ostensibly left-wing content just because my disagreements are usually not significant to make a whole script out of. Um, I can usually just write a comment and be on my merry way. Unfortunately though, a little while ago I spent a bit of time browsing Reddit. I know. I hope that you can find it in your heart to forgive me. Where is my Goddamn ukulele. Some silly person linked a video titled The Usual Progressive Line About Alienated Young Men Is Wrong from a channel called Card Posting, and without beating around the bush, uh, the video's bad. It's, it's really, really bad. Uh, the arguments betray incredibly flawed reasoning and a confusing political philosophy, to say the least. So without further ado, let's give Card a chance to give their side. Hello there. My name's Card. I'm a long-time progressive community organizer and activist. Recently on this YouTube page, I talked about why the reactionary incel worldview is not worth entertaining in the least. So far, so good. And how it's also so nonsensically incoherent, it essentially can't be sustained as any sort of political position. Oh, maybe I was wrong about this. I don't think most of my fellow progressives are on the right track on the issue. So today, I'd like to explain why I think that is, as well as what I think a better framing of the issue is, and how us lefties should respond to it. Everyone online understands already basically what an incel is. You would think that that's true, but as this video will make clear very soon, somebody here doesn't understand what an incel is. And everyone online with broadly left-wing sympathies is familiar with the explanation that as capitalism gets worse, the cost of living goes up, wages stagnate or effectively roll backwards, and it becomes harder for young adults to move out of their family homes or go out and socialize properly. You might also add on something about political polarization and how the internet provides too easy of an alternative to going out and meeting people. This is a general idea among a lot of left-wing people, especially online left-wing commentators, and it's become a straightforward explanation for many as to why incels have become a thing as of late. I'd argue it's a bit more complicated than that, but generally, yes. Incels as a social phenomenon have become more prevalent as a result of men becoming more socially alienated, of them struggling to healthily adjust to changing technology, and far-right organizations using that alienation and unhealthy adjustment to turn them into pawns, appealing to their frustrations and giving them quick and easy answers that lead to horrifying ends. It should be noted that this is an explanation, not a justification. Being an incel is a bad thing. You should not be that thing. You should try to cease being that thing. Nonetheless, society is producing them. We can be conservatives and pretend like this is all complete individual failings, just like every poor person is just bad with money. Or we can be progressives and try to find ways to adjust the conditions that they live under in order to stop producing them. I think it's perhaps just a natural human impulse to try and explain why social phenomena are the way they are. but. This political diagnosis of the incel condition is both wrong and it does a disservice to the interests of progressive organizing. This idea that incels are being created by Western society implies that it's a big problem that can't be avoided. No. No, it doesn't imply that. It implies that keeping conditions exactly the same will make it unavoidable. You honestly just sound like a woke Republican right now. But the reality is that actually most adults don't have a problem making friends or finding romantic partners. Or at the very least, they aren't running around shooting up sororities and nail salons when they can't. That's never once been the standard for a social phenomenon. It doesn't matter whether most people have this issue, it matters whether a percentage of them do. Most Americans are white, that does not therefore mean that racism isn't a problem. Like. Obviously. Also, what are you talking about shooting up sororities and nail salons? Most incels are not mass shooters. The central assumption of this video seems to be that all incels are just violent maniacs that can't be contained, but that's not what they are. Short for involuntary celibate, an incel is a person who struggles to find romantic relationships and blames that struggle on the demographic of desired romantic partners. The vast majority of incels are men, but they don't make up the entire category. And incel ideologies are reactionary, they're toxic, they lead to a festering hatred of an entire category of human, which can, in some people, lead to mass violence. But that doesn't 
apply to every single person, and I think it's messed up to say otherwise. By secretly redefining the word, you're unfairly characterizing progressives who support reaching out to incel and incel-adjacent communities as reaching out to mass shooters, which, as you're going to make clear, would be the same to you as just defending mass shooters. But even if this were the definition, you'd still be wrong. Mass shootings are a social problem, after all, and we as members of society should be supporting ways to prevent them from happening, whether that potentially means reaching out to people before they go down that route whenever possible. You could call that defending shooters, but you would be wrong. Most people are actually doing fine socially. No. No, we are not. Thank you very much. Of course, Unlike this person, I've actually got a little bit of evidence to support my disagreement. According to one study, linked below, covering social engagement from 2003 to 2020, people are spending an average of 300 more hours per year socially isolated in 2020 than they were in 2003. Note, one, that this trend began before the pandemic, and two, that these graphs might be a bit weird to read, so I would recommend just checking out the actual study instead of parroting what I'm saying here. Here's a survey. People have fewer friends now. They're more depressed. This claim is genuinely laughable. I, good for you that your social life is doing fantastic. I'm having a pretty good time of it too at the moment. Uh, that's far from the universal experience though. Despite worsening conditions under capitalism across the board, 99% of young adults who are, for example, working an unsatisfying job just to pay the bills, or who are paying and studying full time to put themselves through tertiary education, still have friends in a healthy social circle and love life. After what we've covered already, I'll admit this boils my blood a bit, so at the risk of sounding like a complete asshole, uh, citation fucking needed. Incels are an absolute minority, and they haven't been forced into their situation by factors totally beyond their control. They're largely just unhappy, specifically because they've latched onto an unhinged reactionary worldview of their own accord. Respectfully, what does this mean? Did this ideology come out of thin air? Did this reactionary worldview appear as if by magic? No, it came about by a variety of socioeconomic factors leading to vulnerable, unhealthy men being manipulated by movements they're far too lost in the sauce to understand. This whole they chose it completely of their own accord shtick is just reactionary rhetoric. This individualist mindset works fine on an individual level. If you have a friend who's moving down the alt-right black pill pipeline, you should absolutely step in and try and give them a better outlook, assuming you feel safe doing so. But we're talking about movements here, and movements don't have the privilege of treating every social problem as an individual failing. At some point, I kind of want to do a video about econophysics to better outline the point that I'm making here, but suffice it to say, social phenomena oftentimes behave very similarly to kinetic exchange models in physics, which is to say that all of these different social outcomes are heavily affected by initial conditions in a very consistent pattern. The clear implication of this being that if we want to change outcomes, we have to change systems and adapt to the systems we can't change. The Elliot Rogers and Alec Manassians of the world weren't forced into becoming entitled violent killers by their economic standing, and they certainly weren't brainwashed by the internet. They chose what to believe in, and they chose to kill innocent people in the name of their beliefs. No, they weren't forced, but they also weren't magic. They blamed their legitimate and illegitimate problems on women and minorities because a variety of social forces were encouraging that behavior. Please note that encouraging that behavior does not necessarily mean that people were saying, yes, go and do X. It, there's a variety of mechanisms by which behavior can be encouraged. The claim that they chose what to believe is especially wild because as anyone with principles can tell you, you don't get to hand pick the beliefs that you hold. You adopt them through a variety of mechanisms, some of which are completely involuntary and others which are more intentional. There exist wealthy and powerful people who have a vested interest in convincing young men to take out their anger at their genuine struggles on marginalized people. And that's what bugs me so much about this argument. The bad guys, so to speak, get this. They know that they need to be indoctrinating people while they're young through whatever channels that they can. Even without all these other complex social forces, that alone should tell you we should be giving them a healthier, safer counter-narrative. We should be directing especially young people's frustrations towards the systems that actually cause it and giving them healthier ways to manage their mental health. Far-right people fucking rejoice when another Elliot Roger commits a horrible crime. I, we, we shouldn't just let them have that. The alienation that people feel increasingly under capitalism has absolutely nothing to do with it. In fact, most incel mass killers 
have been, by all accounts, relatively well off first world suburbanites. I don't want to dwell on this point too much, but it's literally irrelevant. Social systems don't only inspire alienation in marginalized populations. A little bit of intersectionality would do you wonders. I get that under capitalism, everyone's alienated more and more and stuff. That's not an excuse for what incels think and do. No shit, it's not an excuse. That has no bearing on whether or not we should be doing outreach to prevent mass violence and bring people into healthier, safer movements. If not for their sakes, which personally I think should be enough, then for the sakes of the marginalized people, they'll no longer be hurting. Furthermore, the myth that somehow most people, or even most young men, can't get dates or find romantic partners now is just wrong. Again, most normal people are actually fine romance-wise. Again, that's irrelevant, but also, what the hell does normal mean? And acting like the incels have a point by saying otherwise is needlessly entertaining them. No. No, it is not. They, they do have a point that the world is becoming more confusing, difficult to navigate, and socially detached. They are 100% wrong about why and how. Giving a 16-year-old depressed boy a yes and and teaching him better ways to cope with his struggles is not entertaining incel ideology. In fact, I'll take it a step further. Giving a 30-year-old incel man better ways to cope with his struggles is not entertaining the ideology. It is, in fact, the kindest thing you can do for both him and the world. Dating hasn't suddenly gotten harder because of economic conditions. Incels just can't find a partner because they are fundamentally unpleasant people. You know, there's a common line that progressives use as kind of a litmus test for reactionary ideology. Essentially, you're instructed to ask a person if they think that some people are just better than others. If they say yes, then they're a reactionary, and if they say no, they're probably not. I don't think it's Perfect. People can lie, after all. Uh, but this person is just straight up admitting that that's what they think. That some people are just fundamentally intolerable. Trying to explain away why incels are the way they are is almost to implicitly excuse it. This is not even remotely true, though it might be one of the most blatant examples of anti-intellectualism that I've seen from a self-proclaimed progressive in quite a while. Historians have for some time studied the intricacies of the rise of fascism in Germany, Italy, Spain, <coughs> America. <coughs> Sorry, blacked out there for a second. Uh, to explain a phenomenon is not even remotely to justify it. It is in fact through explanation of a phenomenon that we can best figure out how to either encourage or prevent it. Not only should you not be doing soft apologia for them, if you do think the time and effort you put into reaching these people is valuable, you should be using it to help people who are actually needing and deserving of your time and energy, not shut in internet misogynists. And this is the line that made me want to make a video about this. I'm sorry, but if you want to call yourself a progressive, you should be invested in the well-being of everyone. We are supposed to support rehabilitative justice, not just for murderers and thieves, but for bigots and racists. Of course, if you for any reason don't want to participate in that process, that's fine. Whether it be because it's a source of trauma, or you don't have that particular skill set, or you don't feel safe in those areas, that's your right, and that is a valid right at that. But to actively oppose those efforts is to say that you don't actually care about bettering the world, you just care about bettering it for a specific subset of people, or maybe just yourself. I oppose white supremacy because it is an active harm to people of color, but even if it weren't, I would still oppose it because white supremacy is a toxic lie that harms virtually all of its practitioners. They are sad, lonely, weak, because it behooves systems of power in this country to have sad, lonely, weak people who allow covert injustice to go unnoticed. If I had to choose between helping the victims of injustice or the perpetrators of it, I would choose victims in a heartbeat every single time. But as long as I have the opportunity to be a part of helping both, I will defend that goal. And so should you. It just so happens that the best way to help racists is to make them not racist. The best way to help incels is to make them not incels. Progressive organizers shouldn't be wasting any time on these people. So long as they continue to define themselves by a completely diseased worldview, we shouldn't be trying to get them on side. I've... Very few people go through ideological conversions alone, so... We don't owe anyone our sympathy or our time trying to rehabilitate them kindly. Jesus Christ. No, individuals don't. But the progressive movement as a whole absolutely does. 
I, this movement is clearly aimed at the process of organizing, but it's also obviously trying to appeal to the movement as a whole. And to be quite frank about it, I find that chilling. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Comment how you've defended incels this week.